and welcome back to Commonwealth Cars. So this is going to be a really quick, uh, awkward and disjointed review of a 2016 Hemi Dodge Charger, which I've gotten uh, as a rental vehicle down here in sunny Palm Desert, California. So the way that I ended up with this car was I landed from my flight from Vancouver, got here, walked up to the rental desk, and they said to me possibly the most horrifying thing they could say, which was, your Prius is ready. Oh my no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 I was not okay with that, so I said, what else do you have? They started listing off some Volvos and some other interesting things, and uh, finally he said, well, we have a Charger. And there was such a long lineup behind me, I just didn't want to bother with this, so I said, fine, okay, I'll take this Charger. Walk outside, and I was pleasantly surprised to see, at least, that it was a Hemi Charger. All black, so I was more okay with that. Uh, so here we are, a few days in, I keep meaning to do a review on this car, but uh, I'm actually down here for some business reasons, so I've run out of time. But I'm on my way to the gym right now, which explains why I'm uh, half-dressed and uh, kind of distracted, but I'm gonna do my best with what I've got right now. So, first things first, let's list off the things that I like about this car. Uh, I like that it sounds actually pretty good, considering it's a five point, I think it's 5.7 liter V8. So I like that. It's got paddle shifters, I like that. Sports mode and turning off trash and control is really easy to do, which I also appreciate because sometimes on the fly, you just, you gotta throw it in sport and take traction off. For whatever reason. Uh, so I like that. It's really comfortable. It's got a really smooth ride, uh, but it's still firm. Like if you're needing to maneuver around something, no problem with that either, but it's very comfortable. It seats five people. I've had this thing maxed out a couple times on this trip with uh, full capacity and it drives awesome. Power's there. It's 375 horsepower and 395 torque, I believe, in this, uh, this Hemi engine in this car. So I like that. I actually like the way it looks. It's got really cool LED headlights on this car and that really cool long LED back tail light on it that I'll get Toby to go on. Put it in here somewhere, Toby. Yeah. Oh, you touch my ta la la. Mm, my ding ding dong. Okay, thanks. So I think that actually looks pretty cool. Uh, it does burnouts really easily. Don't ask me how I know. Um, other than that, things I don't like about actually the one thing I forgot to mention that I do really like about this car is it has Apple CarPlay. It's like the only car uh, I've been in that actually has a functioning. Apple CarPlay or whatever they call that, which is really cool. It reads out your text messages when you get them. Uh, you can go into your music really easily and phone calls and whatever, but I, I really like that feature considering it's an American car. Things I don't like about this car, terrible on gas. That's not the biggest deal in the world for me. I'm used to that with the GTR and the Lamborghini. They're not exactly uh, economy vehicles, but this car, pretty, pretty bad on gas, but I also have a pretty heavy foot while I'm going around down here. Uh, things I don't like. The interior feels a bit cheap. It's pretty, it's pretty plasticky. The seats are this uh, typical. I mean, I guess it feels kind of heavy duty, but the the material is not mm, not super high quality. Uh, things I don't like about this car. That's really it. I mean, the sound system's not that great, but it is a rental. If you ended up going with uh, a higher model where you got some better options, I'm sure you could. I'm sure they have options for, for better sound in here. But it, it's surprising to me that that really is the extent of my dislikes of this car. It, it, there, there's not a lot. And to be quite honest, I actually wouldn't mind to daily one of these around uh, back up in Vancouver. I don't think it would do well in the snow, but I would be okay with it. I might even, I mean, knowing me, I'd probably go for like an SRT. Uh, but even this Hemi, it, it's pretty decent power, pretty quick off the line. It sounds good, like for a stock rental car, I don't know if the, my camera's gonna pick up on this, but it sounds pretty decent, in my opinion, all things considered. So while Caleb is currently in Australia right now, uh, he's been for years talking to me about Holden and how much he loves these Holden cars and they're the most amazing V8s and blah, 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 usual Aussie garbage, right? Um, 
So he's gone and rented uh, a vehicle there now for his trip, and now we've got to cut him some slack. We know the Australians, they're not great with like numbers and figures and stuff, because he's gone and rented himself a V6. I mean, the numbers look pretty similar. I know it's just missing a little edge there, but I mean, come on, Kale. A V6, really? Really? Well, what do you... But anyways, we're going to have to move on now and hear what Caleb thinks of his wonderful Holden V6 in lovely Australia, where I actually think it's raining right now. So uh, let's... Uh, is he going to come in this way or... The, Toby, figure it out. All right, so here we are. We're in the SV6. It's the Holden Commodore. Uh, we're in Australia, in Queensland, doing a bit of highway driving at the moment. Uh, I know Luke's doing a little bit of a comparison with the American vehicles down in California. Uh, we're going to go through a little bit of what Australian cars are. I wanted to get the sedan. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't get the V8, but we got the V6, but that's okay because Australian cars are better anyway, so we don't really need all that extra grunt because Luke needs it. Wanted to get the sedan, got something better. Got the wagon. Now that is about as quintessential Australian vehicle as you can possibly get. Pretty much all I need now is a Bintang singlet, a pair of stubbies, a mullet, and some double pluggers, and I would be right as rain. Actually, if you don't know what double pluggers are, that's some double pluggers right there. So we got a few little extra trimmings in the vehicle. We got a nice little heads up display. We also now I know Luke is going to absolutely love this, it's got a little bit of carbon fibre throughout the interior here, which is quite nice. Um, now I know, I know uh, this little heads up that we're doing between the American vehicles and the Australian vehicles, um, Australians obviously better, um, it's much more cruisier, much better vehicles. I know Toby's going to say something about UK muscle cars, but Let's be honest, they're a piece of crap. And they don't really exist. Um, so as I said, we're doing a little bit of uh, coast driving at the moment. We're heading up to Brisbane. Finding what I like so far, it's a very easy drive. Very comfortable. It's a nice leather interior. Um, as I said, the heads-up display is really, really nice. In fact, it even tells you when you want to, uh, when you want to make a turn. It, tells, it asks, please before you turn. So I mean, they talk about Canadians being a nice bunch, but our sat-nav says please before a turn, so. Please keep to the right. As I said, we're uh, in the SV6 here, and it's got the, it's the LFX uh, 3.6 V6 engine. And the interesting thing, well, the thing I find interesting is that Luke has the, I think it's the Hemi V8 5.7, and some reason, I don't know how they even managed to get as little as 375 horsepower out of that engine. I don't know what they did or what they did wrong, but I guess, I don't know, Australian cars are better. So as well, there's a, there's this thing that I remembered coming back to Australia, as we now live in Canada. It's this little, um, people would call it a design flaw. I think it's more just ease of access. There's an amazing thing that happens on Commodores. Um, if you're from Australia, you've probably seen them everywhere. It's where the petrol cover likes to just fall off without notice. I think it's aesthetically pleasing and it's really just ease of access. Somebody would say it's a design flaw, but it's a real pinnacle of engineering right there. And uh, as we'll have a few little photos and, and images and videos so that you can see what I'm talking about, I think you'll agree. Beautiful design on the behalf of Holden. Oh, we've been driving this car for a little bit now. Um, I know we've been ripping on Luke for having all noise and no grunt, but I do have to be honest, I would like a little bit of noise. The V6 is economical and inside the cabin, you know, it's nice and quiet for, for cruising around, but you know, when you put your foot down, you do want a little bit of something behind you. You want that little bit of guttural roar out of the engine. That, and this, I mean, this is a sports, this is a family sports sedan. Um, so for what it is, it's a great vehicle. Uh, Holden always make a great car. 
and that engine, that SV6 LFX engine, that's a locally built engine. So uh, it performs really well on highway drives and we took it up the mountain um, yesterday and for such a long car, it actually handled really well. A little bit of roll, but it was quite nice to, to kind of bring it around the corners pretty quickly. But if you're a family man and you want a little bit of power out of your vehicles, um, as well as a little bit of room in the back, this is a great, great vehicle. One thing I have noticed uh, though is the seat. Having sat here for a little bit, uh, we're in Queensland, so it's a little bit of hotter weather, a, bit of, a little bit more humidity. These are the leather seats, but they got a little bit of cloth kind of through the middle there. And I gotta tell you, I'm sweating like a pig. It is terrible. But uh, that's only one little bad thing really, aside from that and the noise, it's a pretty good car. Remember when I was talking about the sound, like Luke gets the V8, we've got the V6, doesn't sound as well, but I learned something. When you turn it on, you get this amazing deep sound. Ready? See? Take that, Luke. Okay, yeah, England doesn't have any muscle cars, but I do have a segment for this episode, and that is fuel efficiency. Because guess what? Both of these uh, cars that they're reviewing, the Holden and the Dodge, don't exactly get great fuel mileage. So, I'm going to save the polar bears. So the Dodge only gets 18 miles to the gallon, which is, which is not great, really. It, in fact, it's terrible. Uh, and the Holden is in much better, averaging only 19 miles to the gallon. Now, why do I bring that up? Well, uh, if you don't know, the English Car Manufacturing uh, Society is one of the best in the world. Uh, if you want to look at some of these logos, these are all English car manufacturers. Um, so I thought I would look at some of their uh, least fuel-efficient cars and see how they compared to these absolute fuel guzzlers. First off, we're going to look at Jaguar, and we're going to be looking at the XF and the XJ. Now, the uh, aforementioned XF, 21.7 miles to the gallon, and the XJ, 20.2 miles to the gallon. So already, these, and these are the, by the way, these are the least fuel-efficient Jaguars that are out there. Clearly, we can see that there's a trend of English cars just having better fuel mileage, and being, you know, more fun to drive, because they can actually turn, you know? Next up, we have Land Rover, uh, the Discovery 4, has a, a 5 litre V8 in it, uh, and it still gets more gas mileage, uh, 20 miles per gallon. Uh, next up, Aston Martin, uh, V8 Vantage, if you uh, are feeling so inclined, 20.4 miles to the gallon. Uh, a Bentley Continental GT V8, which is a beautiful looking car, mm, beautiful, is 26.7 miles to the gallon, and the McLaren MP4 12C gets in at 24.2 miles per gallon. So what have we learnt here today in this brief excursion? Well, we've learnt that English cars are way better in basically every way, I've just highlighted one, um, and they can also turn and they look much nicer. So. Now I'm going to roast your cars. The Dodge looks like a box. It's like a box fish. It's gross. And the Holden is probably one of the most ugly cars I've ever seen. It's super gross. So, yeah. I, I would do a mic drop here, but I don't want to... I don't want to hurt the mic, so I'm just going to like... It's the way she talked to me. It smiled. <laughs>